Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this section we are going to simply add a new resource which is our DynamoDB table. We are going to name our table users and we are going to have three attributes mentioned while creating the table which is email, country and created at. So let's go ahead and add a resource to our serverless YAML file. So we are back to our serverless YAML file. Now in our stack, if we want to add a new resource, we need to add resources section. And under resources, we need to add other resources. Now under resources, we can add a new resource. In our case, we want to add a users table. Now, now this resource will have a type, what kind of resource you want to add. So in our case, we want um, an AWS Dynamo DB table. And this resource will have some properties. So these properties are specific to different resources. We are going to add uh, some required properties for DynamoDB. Now the first thing we need to add is the table name. Now we can hard code the table's name as users table here or anything you want but I want to keep it uh, to make it more dynamic the table name we can add a variable under custom section I want to name the variable as users table name and let's name it users table and then refer to let's pick the stage variable if we pass it through command line argument while running sls deploy command and if that is not present by default i want to pick the stage under provider section and then use this table name or refer to this table name from custom section under our resources so we can refer to custom section using self custom and then the variable name right so for each environment we will have a table name which will be users table dash and then the environment so by default if we do not pass anything under options we are going to have table name as users table dash def now after table name the table will have some attribute definitions attribute definitions will have the attribute name and attribute type so the first one I want to add is email and type will be string I'll just copy it and save some time another attribute I want to add is country and let's add one more attribute called created at now after adding the attributes we need to define the key schema for our table now again key schema will have the attribute and the key type now this key schema is for the default index that our table have or to set our table's primary key. So we just need to set the primary key here. We don't need the range key here. And to set the primary key, we need to set the key type as hash. And I'm using the attribute name as email. We also need to set the billing mode. I'm going to set it as provisioned and when we set the billing mode as provisioned we need to set uh, the provision throughput 
now under provisions report i need to set read capacity units so i'm going to set them as five and then i need to set write capacity units let's set it to 10 as write takes more throughput so i'm going to set it as twice the value of rcus now this is a basic configuration we need to uh, create a users table okay later on we'll see how we can add a secondary global index or gsi now if you try to run this as serverless yaml file it's going to throw an error right because we have three attributes defined in our table but only one of it is used as um, either a primary key or hash key or a range key right so these country and created at these two attributes are not defined in any of the indexes as primary or range key so i just want to show you that error so let's go back to our project directory and i'm going to run our deploy command so there you go you can see that our deploy command has failed and we have an error which says number of attributes in key schema does not exactly match the number of attributes defined in attribute definitions. That means in our serverless YAML file, we have defined three attributes under attribute definitions and under key schema, we just have one attribute, the email that we used for our default tables primary key. To resolve this issue, either we need to create a global secondary index where we can use country as primary key and create it at attribute as a range key or we can remove these two attributes for now and try to redeploy the code because we know we can always create a global secondary index later on so we can add these attributes later and create a GSI. For now, let's go back to our CLI. Let me clear the screen and try to redeploy our code. So our deployment is complete without errors this time. So we have resolved the errors successfully by removing the unused uh, attributes that we had in our attribute definitions. We also have a new service endpoint, which is nothing but our API gateway endpoint and our lambda function has been deployed. Now let's go back to our serverless YAML file. Now let's uncomment these attributes and add a new global secondary index. So under properties of DynamoDB table, we can add a global secondary index. Now we can have multiple global secondary indexes. So this is a list. Now we can put the index name as country index. Or let's name it by the range that we are going to set, created at. So let's say we want to create an index by range created at. Now again, it's a new index, so key schema. So our primary key will be country. We need to set the primary key as hash. And then we also need to set a range. So in this case, we are going to set the range as created at, and this will become range. Now, if you remember, we can always have some projected attributes in uh, global secondary indexes that we want to project along with these key schema attributes. We can also have, uh, let's say, email here, or we can also have all the attributes that we want to project. When DynamoDB indexes your GSI, your new index. So let's say I want to just keep 
to make sure my indentation is projection type is on. So I, I'm here projecting all that other attributes. So in this case, it will just be email. Right, again, it's a global secondary index. So we need to define provisioned throughput. So along with projection, I'll define my provision throughput values. I'm just going to put five and 10 again. Well, that's it. That's all we need to create a global secondary index with primary key as country and range key as created at. Now let's go back, clear our screen and deploy our code once again. Now while our deployment is going on, we can go to our AWS console. So here you can see our project is being deployed. Now you can always go to resources section and see the deployment in real time, all the progress. So here you can see our user lambda permissions are being created. So our user table has been created. You can go to our user table. You can see your table configuration, indexes. So here you can see it's a provision mode capacity. Your partition key is set as email for your table. Now we have one global index that we created. Our streams are not enabled. We have not enabled time to live for our data. And you can have the ARN or Amazon resource name for your table. You can also monitor your DynamoDB's performance by monitoring here. So these are your CloudWatch monitoring um, graphs that are exported in DynamoDB tables window. Now, if you go to indexes, you will see that we have one global secondary index that we created. Here's the name. It's right now it's being created. Uh, the sort key is created at or the range key. So you can use sort key and range key interchangeably like these are the same thing. The partition key is country, read, write capacity units. We are projecting all the attributes here, etc. Again, the monitoring, you can monitor all your usage here. We have not enabled global tables. So if your users are uh, accessing across the globe, like you can enable different regions and your tables data will be replicated in those regions. So this will make your application faster if your table is being uh, you know, data is being read from different regions across the globe. Now you can also set up your backup uh, configuration if you want to back up your uh, data periodically or one time, you can just do that from here. Now we have not enabled DynamoDB stream. We are going to do that next, but for now the streams are disabled along with exporting or capturing item level changes in your table through stream you can also export your dynamodb table data to s3 or amazon kinesis for mostly for analytical purposes now under additional information again you have your provision capacity unit information now you, you'll also get your index level capacity information and also it will give you a cost uh, for your provisioned capacity units and this cost is for the total capacity units you have provisioned uh, across indexes and for the base table 
and in the end you can also enable your data at rest encryption if that is required if you want to encrypt your data while it's saved in your table you can do that here now under explore items section you can select your table and this will allow you to scan or query your table right from console so you can query your data here once we have some data here we'll try to run some queries server deployment is complete and by now we have a DynamoDB table with base index with primary key email and our global secondary index with primary key as country and sort key as created at. Then the next section we will start building our lambda functions for crude actions and also integrate our lambda with the DynamoDB. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture.